Alright, so today we're trying to figure out what's going on with this uh, ER32 uh, collet set that I bought off Amazon. It was only 50 bucks and so I figured what the heck we'll see because I needed something for my little modified mini mill here that I converted into a CNC to get the right reach. So I bought this little kit. And you can see right here it comes with uh, six of the little collets and then it's got the chuck up here. And so I installed it and I was playing a little bit with it but the thing is just wobbly as can be. So something's not machined right on it. And like I say for 50 bucks, hey you know, maybe it's okay for the price if we can figure out how to fix it. But if not, then it's probably not worth buying even though it's so cheap. And so I'm checking up top, so I got a gauge on it right here, and you can see if I zoom in there, we're sitting on right around zero. And so if I turn it on and spin it around, you can see we're moving about a thousandth and a half, which probably isn't too bad for a $50 collet. And I can deal with that on my little machine, but it's moving a whole lot more than that on the end down there. So something's going on on the end where these little things right here connect up in there. Either the taper's off or something's in the way or something's keeping it off center. So we're gonna have a look, see what's going on inside of there. I'm gonna take it out to the shop and put it on the lathe and we're gonna spin it around with the indicator so we can see what's going on with the different pieces. So we'll be back here in a minute once we got it set up in the shop. All right, so we got the little collet set up on the lathe and let me zoom in here and you can see and my lathe chuck is dead on so as you can see when I rotate it there's my thousandth and a half in the gauge right there I can zoom in there so you can see it so you can see we're not off by much so now what we want to do is put the gauge out on the end of the tool out here and I got a long tool in it. I don't use this long of a tool uh, normally when I'm on the CNC but if I needed to I got to get this little guy in good shape or get rid of him. So I'm going to set up out here and we're going to see just how much wobble the end of that tool has. Alright so we got our indicator out here. It's about an inch and a half out so not real far. If I was way out here, it'd be even worse, but the splines are here, so I'm out on the shaft. So, if we look, I'm on zero right there. And as you can see, as I swing it, we're about 5, 10, 15, about 18 thousandths out at an inch and a half. So, that's actually a little better than what it looked like down there on the mini mill. Looks like it was wobbling around quite a bit, but still... That's a little outrageous because if I'm way out here, that's going to multiply even more. So I got to figure out what is causing that collet right there to be crooked and make that tool crooked. So let's get that thing apart and we'll put the indicator inside and then we'll also check and see. Right now, it's not worth the 50 bucks because although it's pretty and it's good here and good up top, something's going on the inside and we're going to have to do something or get us another one. So let's take it apart and see what's going on. All right, so if we look down, we got our indicator on the inside of the collet on the taper. So I'm just trying to see how axial that is. And that looks actually pretty good. It's only about a half thousand even set up over here. I know I got a little bit out, so we don't have a problem with it being machined out of center. So that's a good thing because it's not moving much at all. Now we got to look at the collet and see how well the collet is machined. So let's get the collet in there and see what's going on with it. Alright, so if we look at the collet on these, these ER32s are set up with a taper that goes up in here and locks in. And that's pretty tight. I don't feel much movement at all. And it's also got a little taper on its nose that goes into a taper here. And one thing I notice is that in order, because you know it locks in there when you snap it down in there, and so it'll stay locked in. But one side is opened up a little bit so you can push it sideways and get it out. It's got a little bit of a outer roundness cutout right there. 
So I'm wondering if maybe this wall is a little bit too big and it's holding that off center or something because this feels pretty good. Don't see too many issues out of that wanting to move. Feels tight, sticks in there good. But this one, when I lock it in there, that one right there is a little bit loose. So I'm wondering if maybe that's the issue that either when you push it down, it gets crooked on one side, it won't lock in because something's preventing it from locking down on there. So that may be what the problem is, is that this little guy right here with that cutout right there or out around right there, it allows you to pop it out of there. Maybe that's not machined right and it's holding things off. All right, so we took her a little part and we got her painted up with some uh, purple dicum. So you can see that in there. It's still a little bit warm where I heated it up. But if this guy is touching in the right spots, this surface ought to take the purple away on the taper down inside of there. And the top of this little locking groove ought not have any marks on it from this right here. But if that is running into the top and causing it to be crooked, then there's going to be some marks on top. So I'm going to lock it in there as straight as I can. And then we're going to twist it around and we're going to see where the purple marks are. So as we can see, if we can see in the camera, it's touching over here pretty good on the surface of the taper. It's touching around the surface of the taper there. So it's touching pretty good except for right there. And what is going on right there that it's not hitting that taper very good? Looks like it is touching on the inside of this wall right here. So you can see down in there. Let me get a light. So if we look down in there, we can see that we got marks on the taper part right there. They look really good on that side. There's marks all the way around. But right there, it's not marking on that side. And so something's going on and it looks like it's touching the wall up here because my purple stuff is missing right here on the edge of this. And this is that little lock-in wall. So it looks like it's touching that. So it may just be that that wall is a little bit too big and it's causing it to go off center. So... What I'm going to do, since this guy's hardened, is I'm going to take a Dremel and I'm going to Dremel back on that surface right there and see if I can't get this thing to center up and lock in. Alright, so with a Dremel and a diamond tip on it, I'm going to go in there and try to take some of this wall off right here and just see if that's what's holding us back. <laughs> And there we go. So we got that wall shaved back a little bit right there. So now let's blow all of our Dremel dust out and hook it back up on the lathe and see if that didn't help us with our issue of that collet not coming in straight. All right. So after doing our little bit of machining there on the inside with the Dremel, I'm set back up out on the end about where I was before. And as we can see when I spin it now, um about seven thousandths versus the 18 so i got rid of about half of it just by machining off that wall just a little bit and that looks a little bit better so i think what i need to do is go a little bit further with my dremeling and see if i can't get this guy getting a whole lot closer maybe just a couple thousand south so let's do that one more time and uh, see if we can't get this thing a little bit better all right, so after one more little dremeling of that funny looking little shape that's inside of there that allows you to take the collet out, we can see that now we are at about, eh, look like about a thousandth and a half, two thousand. So it's perfectly acceptable for a $50 collet set. Let me just zoom in there and you can see it. So there's... Just right at zero, and then we're about 
right at a thousand two thousandths just right at it so not too bad at all considering when we started out we were at about 18 and when it was down there on the machine it was worse than that so i think a lot depended on how i put the tool up in there but the problem turned out being that that little wall inside of there that has a oblong shape that allows you to pop the collet out that was hitting on the edge of the collet and then it was causing it to go sideways so there we go that's much better quite tolerable especially for 50 dollars for the tool set so i think i'm all right but it would take a dremel to get that thing squared back away and you'd also have to have a lathe or something to figure out if you're even doing anything so as far as waste of money or worth it I'd say for me it was worth it for 50 bucks to get the collet set because I could fix it but if you didn't have the other tools or you didn't have a way to do it it might be a waste of money all right so we're set up with the quarter inch collet and my quarter inch bit and this one I usually use stubby. I don't use this long one, so it's kind of stubby. But even that far out, we can check this one. And there's probably a little variation collet to collet, but you can see that that one has improved dramatically as well. It's out about three thousandths on it. If I zoom in there, you can see. So it's running about, right at about three thousandths on its wobble that far out. So not too bad i'm always short on that one so that's going to be okay for me as well but it does show there's a little bit of variation in the collet to collet but that wall turned out was the issue so there we go let me take it back apart and we'll show you what we did all right so just to show what we did here this part is the taper that the collet goes into and then right up above is a little groove and then this little oblong shaped thing that goes in this groove right here that holds on to the collet for you and so what i had to do is actually take that surface and make it bigger so it doesn't hold the collet as well now you can see it's a little looser still holds on to it but it'll pop out of there pretty easy but i had to make that bigger because it was in the way and it still locks in there and everything but that got us squared up just by opening that up a little bit and then taking the corner off right up on the top up there. And we're in pretty good shape now. Well, alrighty, looks like our $50 collet set is worth it for me. But if you didn't want to do all this machining, maybe it wasn't. So I don't know. Well, alrighty, well, thanks for watching.